All right. Today's date is August 22nd, 2015, and this is my threaded discussion for week three. Okay. Alrighty, so this week I've been given a series of questions, cases one through five, and I will start with case one. Okay. The surgeon asks you for size 2O silk suture. After you have given the surgeon the suture, you realize that you have mistakenly passed a 3O suture. The surgeon has already inserted the suture and is about to tie it. What will you do? This has actually happened to me before. I, I can remember when I, when I first started, the first couple of weeks when I started clinicals, this actually happened to me on two separate occasions. Uh, one occasion, I can't remember what, what case I was doing, but I remember I handed him the wrong suture, and I noticed that it was the wrong one, and I, and I did what I was supposed to do. I said, oh, sorry about that, sir. That's the wrong suture. Another case I did, the surgeon noticed before I did, and she was using it, and she she was like, is, is, is this a... 3O Vicryl, and I was like, oh, sorry, no, that, that's a something else. You know, she's like, all right, I'm going to need a, you know, 3 Vicryl. And I was like, oh, sorry about that, I apologize, and then loaded it, handed it off. But in, in this situation, it, it just goes back to surgical conscience, you know, integrity. If you make a mistake, own up to it. It doesn't, and this might seem like a small, a small thing a small thing because it's only a different size 2o versus 3o you might be thinking oh that's not a big deal it's it's oh it's just 3o it's it's there's no difference but you don't know that the surgeon might have a specific reason you're not a surgeon i'm not a surgeon so i don't have the right to say oh well it's no big deal it's 3o suture they asked for 2o they might have like i said a specific reason why they need 2o versus 3o if they wanted 3o they would have asked for 3o and if you don't specify that in time, the surgeon might not notice and use it, thinking that it's the suture they asked for, for whatever reason they asked for it. And later on, that might cause problems for the surgeon later in the case, or worst case scenario, it might cause some medical issues for the patient, for whatever reason. You don't have the right to make that decision. The surgeon they're the ones who make that choice of what size and what type of suture. God forbid if you hand them the wrong type of suture altogether. It goes to say with anything, anything they ask for, you need to ask, give them precisely what they ask for. If it's medication, it doesn't matter if, oh, it's only an extra cc. They asked for four cc's, I gave them five. That can make a significant difference on the patient, especially if it's a, a pediatric patient. Give them exactly what they ask for. And if you notice that you gave them the wrong thing, right away, let them know, oh, I'm sorry about that. There was an extra CC in there. That shouldn't ever happen. You should be labeling and checking and looking at everything you pass off and making sure you know what it is. I actually, after this happened, it's, I remember during this time, I actually changed how I was handing off my suture. It's difficult to keep track. It can be difficult in bigger cases because if you have more than one type of suture or more than one type of size, I notice I actually uh, preload my suture before handing it off. I make sure that I have a needle driver and it's already loaded on a needle driver. It saves time. You're quicker. It's most most techs that I've seen do that. Um, but before when I when I handed off the wrong suture. I noticed I was taking, when I loaded it, I was taking the suture completely out of the package. So now what I do is when I preload a suture, I just take the driver, I load the needle, and I keep the whole, su I keep the whole suture inside its package. And I do that for three reasons. One reason is I've learned that it's easier to hand it off because if it's, if it's in the package, I can load it and then hand it off and then 
pull the suture out of the package. That way it doesn't get tangled up on the field. It doesn't get contaminated, fall below, and it's quicker. Second reason I do that is in bigger cases, like I said, you might have more than one size, more than one type of suture on your field. And if you're loading them, it's easier to keep them in the package because if they ask for something specific, then you can just look down and say, oh, he needs a 3.0 Vicryl. Okay, I have 3.0 Vicryl. There's 3.0, 5.0, 6.0, .0, different kinds. But if you keep it with the package, then you can, can reconfirm what it is. That way there won't be any mistakes or question of what kind you had. And then when they ask you for it, you don't have to take up time saying, I need a 3.0. And you're like, oh, which which one is it? Is it this one or that one? You don't have to you don't have to take any extra time to determine which suture you have. The other reason is, uh, whenever I have something like chromic or something like that, I don't want to pull it out and let it dry out. I want to keep it in the package, uh, and so I can load I can load the needle and then leave it in there. That way, when I pass it off, it's fresh. It it didn't dry out or anything. So that's why I do it that way. So. Once again, if you pass the wrong suture and you notice, right away say, hey, sorry about that, sir. That's actually a 3.0, not a 2.0. I apologize. Do you want me to and say, do you want me to load? Go ahead and, and load the 2.0. He'll say, yeah, sure, or no, don't worry about it. So, surgical conscience. Okay, case two. You placed a package of surgical gut in a basin to rinse it and make it more pliable. You forgot that the suture was in the basin and now it is very limp and waterlogged. Is it safe to use? Hmm. Well, I've never actually had this situation happen to me and I don't really recall reading about this situation before. Um... My guess would be not to use it. I'm not a surgeon, and I've never had this situation before, but it says it's very limp and waterlogged. I'm guessing, depending on how it's used, especially if it's like absorbable suture, you know, it's absorbable, it's meant to eventually dissolve and be absorbed in surrounding tissue, so leaving it in a, in a, base, in a basin for, you know, however long might decrease how efficient it is the surgeon might be thinking it's fresh and it might do this and by leaving it in there it might not work the way that they originally intended so i'm gonna say no don't use it just ask for another one it might take time and you might look foolish but me i i I go with I go on caution. So, I'm going to say no. It's not safe to use. Okay, case 3. While you are passing a double arm suture, the free needle snags on the drapes and breaks. What is the next step? Okay, well my guess, the next step, this has actually never happened to me either, um, the next step would obviously be to remove it. If it snags on the drape, it needs to be removed. Now, depending on where it snags, that might determine who or how it gets removed. If it's like, say you're passing it and it snags below the table,